Okay. So in that room over there on the left, there was a cat. Good morning, Massimo. Hi. Morning. Morning. How are you today? I'm good. I'm good. A Thank sunny, you. shiny day here. Yes. Where are we? Okay. So today we're in Milan, and this specific place is called Open Dot, and uh, it is a Fab Lab slash makerspace in Milan. Uh, which is also connected to an uh, interaction design studio called Dot Dot Dot, which shares the same. It must be one of the many fab labs and maker spaces you have visited all over the world. Uh, yeah, I've seen quite a few maker spaces and fab labs, and I've also I've, I've been involved in the creation of a couple of them. So, for example, the, fab, the first Fab Lab in Italy was, uh, is in Torino, and I sort of started that uh, with a couple of other people uh, because I realized that this concept of Fab Lab was very interesting uh, to me, and this was, you know, 2009 or something, and I realized that uh, in Italy there was no Fab Lab. There were Fab Labs in other parts of the world. Uh, there was a Fab Lab even in Afghanistan, according to the official list of Fab Labs. Uh, but there was no Fab Lab in Italy. So yeah. What, in your opinion, what do you recognize? What is the importance of the Fab Lab rather than it's uh, you know excellent place to meet people, to <laughs> do stuff, to be creative? What is the real message of Fab Labs, maker spaces? Well, I mean, to me at least, uh, what it's important about these places is the fact that um, we spend a lot of time, in a way, removing removing people from direct. Uh, interpersonal contact no? because people spend a lot of time online and they interact with people online and I guess a lot of the the people who learn for example about electronics and all that they do it online through forums to websites but then you know when you're building for example electronics when you're building things you in a way need to interact with other people you need to collaborate with other people so fab labs and maker spaces have all this you know uh, ability to allow people to um, to get together, to help each other, uh, to see positive, uh, you know, inspiration, and uh, you know, maybe see somebody who is capable of doing something, and then somebody else thinks, okay, if that person can do this, maybe I can do it as well. So, so this was originally the dot 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 office, and ten years ago, I had my office, I had my desk inside their office that, right here. That was even. Before or was it in the early days of the Arduino? Oh, it was the early days of Arduino. So that's so when Arduino left the design school in Ivrea, and and we started to uh, try to build it up as a as a product. So basically, it's the birth ground of the Arduino as we know it. Or yeah. So a lot of the way. yeah a lot of products were sort of developed uh, on a desk uh, in this space back in those days. Yeah. Ah, we found the box oh, wow. with the Arduinos. Oh, boy. Yeah. Th this is the box with Look, uh, some of the early Arduino samples. Serial number 1100. And, uh, Hold on, let me zoom in to that. Yeah. And this, this is the box with. Uh, There's a lot of. Uh, this is a prototype, a prototype of the Arduino Dieci Mila. Okay. Which uh, it was uh, off the factory. So There's still the parts attached. So. It's already serial number 18,000. So the, the, this is uh, the history of Arduino in one box? Uh, more or less. More or less. <laughs> in the original Fab Labs, there wasn't that much space. It was more about digital fabrication and not that much about electronics. And it was about really going low level with electronics. And that reduced the number of people that could really understand that. Uh, while mm. Arduino was... It's, a, it's an electronics development platform that came out of a design school, of an interaction design school. So effectively, it was designed to help people who are really clever, but have no backgrounds in electronics or software, to be able to use electronics as a creative medium, to create prototypes, to create working objects. Hmm. And so, in a way, the parameters for that uh, were not the classic parameters that, you know, when engineers try to design some electronic circuits, sometimes they go for, you know, maximum power available on the market, best, uh, but then the tools are very difficult to use. While in our case, at our school, we had these uh, people coming from this MIT project called Processing, which is a 
programming language for uh, for artists and designers. Uh, basically, the philosophy that uh, Arduino and other similar projects derived came from their experience of trying to design a language and a, and a development environment that would be very simple for people to be able to build very quickly a working piece of software. Mm -hmm. And of, of obviously the, what we have been pursuing at Ivrea was figuring out ways to build something that would get you going with electronics very quickly. For yourself, if I follow you on Twitter and the, the <laughs> Uh, you're all over the place. I think you're, you're living a life with Arduino. <laughs> um, is, is it also possible to think about a life without Arduino for you? Uh, yes, because effectively, um, in a way, my, my interest is in making technology simpler for people. At the <laughs> moment it is electronics, uh, then it will become something else, you know. There's a lot of different aspects of technology that mm -hmm. need to be simplified, need to be made more accessible to people. So there is always work that needs to be done and that doesn't necessarily require Arduino. Also Arduino is made of a bunch of different components. So there's the hardware, the programming language, programming software, let's put it this way, mm -hmm. uh, documentation and community. Uh, so in a way, there is the possibility of in a way, working on something like Arduino without the hardware, for example. So that that, that is also a bit of the, your future vision of uh, how Arduino will evolve are, over the years? Or? There are several different directions where Arduino could go. I think that if we abstract for a second from Arduino, the issue is really how do we make it simpler for people to be able to create products. And products are made of hardware, software, uh, the whole manufacturing process, the physical part, uh, also ha having access to manufacturing resources, having access to knowledge, or uh, creating tools that make it simpler for people to go from one aspect to another mm. of creating a product. Um, and, and also sometimes some of the contexts that are to me very interesting are not so exciting for the rest of the world. No, no, for no. example, now everybody is very excited about the internet of things. And when they think about the internet of things, they think about essentially home automation. That's what everybody thinks, the Nest thermostat and whatever. Mm. But to me, that's still, you know, not very mature. It's something that, you know, not a lot of people will be able to afford. While, for example, the technologies uh, that are basically part of the maker movement uh, applied to small industry it's a very interesting context for me it is not sexy it's not exciting mm -hmm. uh, for a lot of people but to me you know it's going to enable a bunch of people to invent new jobs or to keep their job or keep their company yeah. you know and, yeah. and, and translate their company into the 21st century so there's a bunch of things that can be done with those technologies that yeah. are very interesting yeah so yeah. the Maker Faire in Rome is now uh, more than 100,000 people. Over more than 100,000 people? Yeah, over three days. My so goodness. we, last edition, we took over the whole uh, Rome exhibition area, <laughs> which is very big. It has uh, eight hunger-sized spaces huge, connected huge, by yes, a, yeah, 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 It was yeah. very big, a lot of people. I mean, yes. The Arduino Uno is uh, the, the, the father or the mother of all <laughs> the Arduino products. I'm not sure if it's uh, he yeah. or she, but um, that might change over time, perhaps. What, what do you feel, where are we in three years' time, if you look at? Well, right now, a lot of people still use the Arduino Uno as a way to learn because it's a very simple platform. Mm. <clears throat> it is actually very robust as well, so it's yeah. kind of difficult to destroy one. <laughs> and, but they don't cost that much money, and uh, you can replace the processor. So it's a very simple, very robust, uh, uh, you know, sometimes jokingly I call it the Russian tank. Because it's mm -hmm. you know it's not very sophisticated maybe but very it robust runs you know? smooth, yeah. and um, clearly right now there's a lot of interest in moving towards more powerful platforms so people are interested in this Internet of Things where the Arduino Uno can do up to a certain point because 
you know it's only got like two kilobytes of ram and that's that's not, not enough so we have things like this uh, maker 1000 mkr 1000 which is a small board uh, which has wi-fi battery management encryption so it has a number of features that you need for a portable connected device uh, and, and I think that's that's an interesting uh, direction where to go. So to enable people to make portable connected products, uh, we embed some features in the Maker 1000 to take care of the security aspect. Like for example, there's a number of issues with uh, IoT and security that a lot of people who develop these products they don't really care about. They don't realize that are important. Uh, <clears throat> and there's a lot of work there to do to explain to people how important security is and even how to embed into the Arduino software a lot of the data so that people kind of get some level of security out of the box and then they can make their product very secure with very little effort. That's one direction. Right now, one I think one aspect that's to me very important with Arduino is that it has been ported to a lot of different processors. So you can run it on a tiny eight pin microcontroller that costs 50 cents of a dollar. But you can also run it on an eight core uh, Cortex A9, whatever um, um, Samsung Arctic 10 module, which is essentially, you know, it's more powerful than the laptop I had like five years ago. Mm -hmm. And now it's a module like this. You can program with Arduino. Yeah, yeah. So the idea is that you can create some code on a smaller board and you can migrate it with, you know, not that much effort to larger, more powerful boards uh, fairly easily. So the, the Arduino software uh, is just playing just an important role as basically the original hardware design as well, I think. The website draws in a huge number of visitors. Yeah, there are usually uh, on a yearly basis there are about 25 million unique visitors coming to the Arduino.cc website, which obviously it's a very important number. All these people who come to the Arduino website, they come to uh, download the software, uh, discuss on the forum, and get documentation and help for hardware made by other people. Yeah. that uses the Arduino software. So I guess that right now the Arduino software is becoming even more relevant for the whole sort of maker slash startup community uh, because they are using it heavily. A lot of startups I see are creating products starting from Arduino code they wrote. You're still doing hands-on work yourself or too busy with traveling or too busy no, I try to do it. Uh, obviously, I try to build stuff uh, every once in a while, as soon as, whenever I can. Yeah. And this is also important for me to understand how different platforms work and uh, what do they provide in a way. And yeah. uh, you know, it, it's in a way it's my job to understand where the technology goes and uh, uh, what thing what things work, what don't work, and. And I build some tutorials sometimes, and yeah. I'm working also on some videos now to explain how this Maker 1000 can be used to build uh, yeah. connected products. So that's okay. a lot of work to do still. Yeah, there's still a lot of work. Yeah, I won't keep more of your time. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank <Thanks>. you. <laughs>